You know, when I was growing up, they told me that the better you do in school, the better you do in life. And they also told me that um, if you work really hard, you can be successful. But I found out, after leaning my ladder up against that building, that when I got closer to the top, it just wasn't true. And I did well in school all the way through the third grade. Um, and it went downhill from there. Uh, but I've worked hard most of my life. I got my first job when I was 14 years old. And I worked for other people until I was 34 years old. That's 20 years of my life I spent working for other people. And I know working hard is not the formula for success because the entire time I worked for other people, I was broke. So the answer must be something different. What is the answer? Well, I believe that the better communicator you become, the better experience of life you will have. And we're gonna look at that from a biblical perspective this morning. It says in John chapter one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shined in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. So it starts out in the beginning was the word. I'm gonna skip down to verse 14. I mean, we could read the whole thing, but you can read it on your own. I'm just gonna skip down to verse number 14. It says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. So, it's really interesting to me that the scripture says in the beginning was the word. Why? Because everything starts with word. And you've, 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 you've probably heard me teach on the four levels of value, right? The lowest level of value is implementation. The next to the lowest level of value is unification. The next to the highest level of value is communication. And the highest level of value is imagination. Now, I got that from Genesis chapter 1, where it's, it, and, and I'm going to tell you where I got it from, because it's really, we, we have to understand, in order for me to understand my nature, I have to understand the nature of God, but I also have to understand the nature of the earth, okay? Because I'm made in the image of God, but my body is made from the dust of the ground. So I have to understand how God is and who God is in order for me to understand me, and I have to understand how things work on, on the earth in order for me to understand how to make my life work. And, and the interesting thing about that is God told us something very important about himself in Genesis chapter one, verse one. And when we think of the attributes of God, when I think of the attributes of God, I think of omniscience. He knows everything. I think of omnipotence. He, he's powerful enough to do anything. I think of omnipresence. He can be everywhere and seem to be nowhere at the same time. And he's love and he's holy and he's righteous and he's just, but none of those things are the first thing that he told us about him. The first thing that God told us about God is that he's creative. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Why did he do that? Well, because he is creative and therefore it is his nature to create. The first thing he tells us about man, and when I say man, I'm talking about Adam man, not Ish man. Adam means man, men and women. God called their name Adam. Adam later called her name Eve. And when God made man, the first thing he tells about man is that he made man in his image, which means he made man to be like him, which means he made man to make stuff and he created man to create stuff, which is why none of us ever feel fulfilled unless we're living in our creative space to make the world a better place. That's the purpose for your life to live in your creative space and make the world a better place. Now, when I say God made us in his image and he made us creative, he did not create me to replace him. He created me to represent him. Are y'all tracking? And so as I represent him, I need to make sure I understand who he is so I can represent him accurately. And it's really interesting that, that one of the things that God gave man that he did not give animals and he did not give trees and he did not give water and he did not give uh, plants 
Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you're enjoying it, but I want to take some time to invite you to join us at the Make More Offers Challenge. The Make More Offers Challenge, we do it once a month where I invite a bunch of entrepreneurs or would-be entrepreneurs to come and have me teach them in detail the four moves that can scale any business. I want to invite you to join us on the Make More Offers Challenge. Click the link in the description below. You will be glad you did. Join as a VIP and you make the rest of your life the best of your life. And now, back to the video you were watching. He gave man the ability to communicate. In fact, one of the first assignments God gave man was to communicate back to God the names of the animals that the God created. So God, man, God gets his identity from himself, from himself, from his self-sufficiency. When I said his self, I was going to say his self-sufficiency, and then I changed it to himself, and then I said his self, himself. He gets his identity from himself, from his self-sufficiency. We get our identity from God. Animals get their identity from us. Are you tracking? Because God told man to name the animals. So they got their identity. And, what, and here's what it says. It, God told... Um, uh, brought the animals to man to see what he would call them. And then it says, whatsoever Adam called every living thing, that was the name thereof. So, when it says, when God created creation, he said, let there be, 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 let there be. The, 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 the word structure was let there be, light. Let the waters above the firmament be divided from the waters beneath the firmament. Let the, later, the greater light rule the day and the lesser light rule the night. When God made animals, he said, let the earth bring forth cattle and creeping thing after his kind. When God made the birds and the fish, he said, let the waters bring forth fowls and fish after their kind. When God made man, he didn't say, let there be man. And he did not say, let the earth bring forth man. And he did not say, uh, let the waters bring forth man. He said, let us make man in our own image. Now, here's where I got the four levels of value from in Genesis chapter one, because I say that a lot. People are like, I don't see that in Genesis chapter one, man. Okay, so you'll see it now. Um, it says, and God said, let us make man in our image. So in order, so it, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. And, and, and he said, let us make man. He didn't say, let me make man. After our likeness. And he said, let them have dominion. okay. And then after God made man, so God made man before he formed man. Y'all remember that, right? God made man. So, so the essence of who you are is not the body, it's not the dirt suit that you wear, right? The essence of who you are is who you are on the inside. The body that God made for man was so that he could have something to utilize in the earth realm. So y'all track it. So... In order, for, in order for God to say, let us make man in our image, the image had to exist first. That's the highest level is image. The Im imagination, the root word of imagination is image. So the image of God had to exist before God could make man in his image. Otherwise, he wouldn't have an image to make man in the image of. So that's, that's the highest level, imagination. And God said... Let us make man. So then God spoke. That's communication. That's the second highest level of value. Communication. God said it. Let us make man in our image. But he didn't say, let me make man in my image. He said, let us make man in our image. That's unification. That's why we're body, soul, and spirit. Father, son, Holy Spirit, body, soul, and spirit. I'm made in the image of God. Y'all tracking. And then the last thing God did in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living soul. So God breathed the man that he made in his image. He breathed that man's life into the body that he made from the dust of the ground. And so it's really interesting how the entire book of Genesis shows, I mean, the entire first chapter of Genesis shows the polarity and the connection and the connecting between heaven and earth. In the beginning, God created the heaven. That's, the God, that's God's realm. And the earth, that's the lower realm. 
Higher realm, lower realm. How much higher? Well, Isaiah chapter 55 says it like this. Um, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, so, So we got heaven and earth, and then we have man who is, for lack of a better word, a hybrid between spirit and flesh. Animals are just animals. They just are what they are. The word for an animal or a beast is bahema, which in Hebrew means ba means in, right? He means, he means like, look at it. And then ma means what? So an animal is, it is what it is. In it is what it is. And so all an animal, an animal cannot become more than it is. A dog is a dog is a dog. A cat is a cat is a cat. A horse is a horse is a horse, of course. Nobody even got that except for us, the, us that are old enough to remember Mr. Ed. Y'all just looking at me like, what, what, what are you talking about? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Like, so, so because that's the case, because that's the case, God gave us this tool called communication. Now, imagination is the highest, form of, the highest level of value. But here's what we have to understand. Communication is essential to imagination. So much so that in John chapter 1, when Jesus is being presented as the Son of God, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So words have power. How much power do they have? Words have so much power that God created the existential nature of the universe with words. God created our existence with words. But we're made in his image. So guess what we do? We create our experience in our existence with our words. And the better your words are, the better your existence is. And the worse your words are, the worse your existence is. Now, I wish when they were teaching me to get good grades, they would have taught me that if you will become a better communicator, your chance of success in life increases exponentially. If you think about all of the people in world history who've impacted the world in a great way for good or for evil, the one thing they have in common is they were all great communicators. It's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. When I think about the fact that I worked on a farm for a whole day back in July of 1980, it was the, to this day, it was the hardest work I've ever done in my life. I worked on a sorghum farm for a day, pulling sorghum in the July heat of Lowell, Indiana. I prayed all that day. Dear God, please deliver me from this sorghum. Please deliver me from this farm. If you let me live through this day, I promise you, I will not tempt you by coming back here tomorrow. I've done done so many hard things in my life. I helped a neighbor of mine put on a rubber roof for a week, and the last two days we were shoveling rocks and buckets, taking them up a ladder, carrying them across this huge building that's way bigger than this building we're in right now, pouring the rocks out on one side, and we did the two dump trucks loads full of rocks. We shoveled rocks for two days, carried them up a ladder, because, well, I've got a family, I've got to take care of them, I've got to work hard. Are y'all tracking? These are the lies that we buy into that cost us too much. And I'm not saying working hard is not good. Working hard is good. Like being diligent is good. But it's not, it's not the formula for success. It's the formula for you becoming stronger. Hard work is a formula for you becoming stronger. It's not necessarily a formula for you for, for success. I, I've, I've, I, I, well, driving a trash truck, that was pretty easy. Um, but I worked in a body shop for this pot smoking 27 year old when I was grown. And I don't remember how old I was. I was probably in my mid thirties. And I worked for this guy, early thirties probably. And when I worked for this guy, um, man, he was always on my case. He was like on me. 
and I'd, I'd go to work, and it was hot in this body shop in the summertime, and I'm, I'm working on semi-trucks, like doing body work on semi-trucks, and the bodies are made out of fiberglass. So I'm sanding this fiberglass all day, and I'm sweating, and the fiberglass shards would get in the cheeks of my face, and then it'd get embedded, and, and then I'd, I'd go, and then when I have to shave, when I'd shave, then I'd have these rashes on my face. But somebody should have just told me, dude, if you will get good at communication, like if you will, be, if you will become more articulate, And then you will use your articulation for income generation. You can make way more money and you don't need fiberglass shards in your face. So here's what it tells us in Proverbs. It says, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It also says, a man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. It didn't say man shall eat good by the fruit of his hands. It didn't say man shall eat good by the fruit of his back. It says man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share something with you all that I've learned in my life that has blessed my life in business in ways that when I first decided to go in this direction, I could not have imagined it be turning into this. The more my words match his words, the more I see him as he says he is, the more I see myself as he says I am, the more I see life as he says it is, the more successful I'm going to become. So my greatest advantage, if I want to have an advantage in an arena in life, I need to discover whatever principles God has established about that arena, and then I need to apply those principles to my life. And I am telling you, there is nothing that comes remotely close to that. Now, here's what's interesting. We talked about the four levels of value, right? The lowest level of value is implementation. God, the last thing God did was he formed man out of the dust of the ground. It's really interesting that the word formed means squeezed, right? He formed man, he molded man. Maybe that's why the Bible gives us so, much, so many references. Hath the potter not power over the clay to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dis- under dishonor? I mean, he's the potter, it's his clay. He can do whatever he wants to with it. And it says, the Lord God formed man. So the lowest level of value is implementation because the last part of man that God made was the physical part of man. Why? Because it was the lowest part. And see, the nature, the the existential nature of life is that the lower should always serve the higher. That's how it works. You think about it, Adam and Eve were fine in the garden as long as they were yielded to God. As soon as they yielded to the voice of the serpent, then they lost everything. Why? Because they got things out of order. They flipped the script. By the way, I believe that, so I believe that that it's important to take care of our environments in which we live. It's important for our houses to be clean. It's important for our neighborhoods to be clean. It's important for our country to be clean. It's important for us to not pollute the ground and not to pollute the air and not to pollute the water. I believe all that's important but I don't believe it to the degree of turning environmentalism into a religion where I'm saving the earth because I'm not gonna save the earth anyway because God's gonna destroy it with fire one day. So what am I gonna save it for? I'm gonna save it up so he can destroy it with fire. No, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to treat it, I'm gonna treat the environment with the respect that it deserves from the standpoint that this is where I live. And my parents taught me like, I, I shouldn't have to tell you to pick up a piece of paper. This is your house too. <laughs> like you live here too. Is that how you want to represent yourself? Just walk past a piece of paper on the floor when you can just as easily pick it up and put it in the trash? Are y'all tracking? And, so, and so, so, so I believe we should take care of the environment, but when we make the environment the objective to the degree that we want to decrease the population of humanity because people are bad for the earth, the earth... People were not made for the earth. The earth was made for people. Yes. 
How do I know that? Because God said so. And the more I align my ideas up with his ideas, the better my ideas are going to be. You want to be more articulate? You want to be more articulate? Read the Bible. My recommendation would be, I'm going to go ahead and say it, not to read the weak watered down NIV version, which it's, it's, and the reason I say that, NIV is not really a Bible in my opinion, and I know a lot of people disagree with that. That's okay. You've been wrong before, and so have I, and so have I. And so have I. So one of us will find out which one, one day which one which one is. There's, they've just got way too many opposite translations in it. Right? And besides, when, is, when ever has some, making something easier made it better? I'm just, just a question. I don't know. Maybe you can think of something. Um, and so I personally like the King James and I like the complete Jewish Bible and the Reese Chronological Bible, which is also in King James, but it's also in a chronological order, so it, it, Bible events as they happen. But read the Bible. I've been reading the Bible since I was 16. It's the first book I ever read. It made so much sense to me, I couldn't stop reading it. And here I am, 62, still reading it. Next, memorize Bible verses. I don't have a good memory. Okay, if that's what you want to tell yourself. But I'm going to tell you, you, have, you remember everything you've ever seen and everything you've ever heard. It's not that you don't have a good memory, it's that you don't have a good system of recall. I'm terrible with names. No, you're just not paying attention to people when they tell you their name. And if that's the excuse you want to use, that's fine. If you want to let yourself off the hook with an excuse and think that somebody else is going to believe that because you said it, fine. But just understand, everybody has a good memory. Um, Mary had a little, whose fleece was white as, everywhere that Mary, the lamb was shorter. When was the last time you said that? But you remember it. We can remember stuff we want to remember and even a lot of stuff we don't. So we don't have a bad memory. We have a bad system of recall. I promise you, if you took a verse a day, if you wrote seven verses on seven three-by-five cards and you read them out loud seven times a day for seven days, not only would you remember them, you would be, it would be impossible for you to forget them. And if you did that, if you wrote the verse, seven verses, Categorically, a verse on prayer, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not, Jeremiah 33, 3. Let's say, I'm, and, I, and I wanted verses on prayer. And I just write down all these verses on prayer and I just read seven verses, read them out loud every day for seven days for the first week. Second week, I read them out loud every day for um, three times. But I start a new list that I read out loud every day for seven times. And then the third week, I read them out loud once a day. And then after that, I can review them every now and then if I want to, but I promise you, they will never escape your memory. What you have to do to memorize scripture is just care enough to do it. To set it as an intention and then pay attention to what you set your attention on. Intention on. So, Jim Iron, what does this have to do with being more articulate? When you will be able to better communicate ideas when you understand God's ideas because now you understand how the universe works. You understand how life works. Okay, you ready? Psalm 119, here's what it says. I have more understanding than the ancients because thy precepts are my meditation. I, watch this now, I understand more than all my teachers because thy precepts are my meditation. What? Under, making the word of God your go-to source of knowledge and truth will give you an advantage over anybody that does not do that. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up. Verse 14. You remember verse 14, right? In the beginning was the Word. Let me say it again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by him. Him who? Him the Word. And without him was not anything made that was made. And then it says, in him was the life. Who? In him the Word was the life. And the life was the light of men. So the word is life and the word is light. The light of men and the light shined in darkness. And here's, here's where the problem comes in. The darkness comprehended it not. Then we go down to verse 14 and it says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's talking about Christ. And we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. 
when you get your understanding of life from the word of God, and then when you communicate those words, those principles, those are the, that's the source, the genesis, the source code of your ideology. And then you take it to another level and you let your words become your flesh so you operate from a space of integrity. So every time you tell somebody you're gonna do something, instead of giving them an excuse, you actually do it. They, when you tell somebody you're going to do something, they don't care about the reason you didn't do it. They just know that you didn't do it. It's kind of like, at time a neighbor said, hey, Myron, can I borrow your lawnmower? I said, no, my wife is making beef stroganoff tonight. He said, okay. He said, <laughs> he said what's that got to do with your lawnmower? I said, nothing. But if I don't want to let you borrow my lawnmower, any excuse will do. <laughs> That didn't, really, that didn't really happen. <laughs> so, so from now on, every time somebody gives you an excuse, the thought that's going to come into your mind is beef stroganoff. <laughs> right? But, but nobody cares. Here's what it says about Christ. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Do you know? Do you, th that, by the way, the interpretation of that is exactly what it says. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's the interpretation. Let me give you an application. When your word becomes your flesh you can dwell among the people you gave it to. When your word doesn't become your flesh, you have to hide from those same people. So when you say, I'm going to send the money tomorrow, and then three weeks later they call and the money's not there, you can't dwell among those people, you have to hide from them. Or at least you feel like you have to hide from them. When you tell somebody you're gonna be somewhere and then you didn't show up, the next time you see them, you try to avoid them. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. When your word becomes your flesh, you don't have to hide from anybody. Then it says... Then it says, and we beheld his glory as the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Wait a minute. This Bible is so masterfully, masterfully woven together with principles. When your word becomes your flesh, you can dwell among the people you gave your word to. Then and only then can they behold your glory. Isn't that what it says in Matthew chapter 5? Let your light so shine among men, they may see your good works and glorify who? Your Father, which is in heaven. Because all we're, all we're, we're doing is ref, we're reflecting the light to the one who back is light. We're redirecting the light. I mean, oh, you're awesome. Well, praise God. If I'm awesome, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. I know if there's anything good in me, it came from him, and it's him that's good in me. It's not me that's good in me. I know me. And the reason you're tripping is because you know you. Well. So become a person of your word. When you say you're going to do something, just do it. Be that person. I promise you, the world will open up for you. You make your words match his words. You make your deeds match your words. I am telling you, it is a formula for achievement, accomplishment, transformation, the likes of which nothing else is. I had polio as an infant, ADD, ADHD, ABCD, EFG, um, <laughs> uh, colorblind. Oh, yeah, all that. Did great in school all the way through the third grade. It went downhill from there. And yet and still, here I am. Why? One reason. The word in me. The word in me. The word to me. The word through me. That's the reason. Maybe that's why it says in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Huh, it's all the word. So simple. I decided, just decided, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, I was gonna build a business based on biblical principles and I'm gonna talk about the Bible in public. And if somebody wants to have me come speak, I'm still gonna talk about the Bible. I'm not gonna be politically correct. I'm not, gonna try, I'm not trying to get votes. So if you don't want the Bible, you don't want me. And I'm okay with that because I'm not looking for any work anyway. Right? Audit, 
all that. Oh, you, but you can't talk about the Bible. People will be offended. Well, then be offended. I'm not, it's not my intent to be offensive, but if you're offended by who I am, deal with it, baby, because I can't fix it and don't have any desire to. So anyway, if you will make the word, the sustenance and the substance of your life, and you will begin to communicate God's principles in every arena that you set your foot into, it will open doors for you that you cannot open for yourself. I trust that this will bless your life as you go and do it. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.